All right, and we're back. Um, so we've done. We 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 found out who was murdered. Um, going to go where she, to where she works, her work establishment. Um. Oh, goodness gracious me and I. Um. So I think I was supposed to follow. Hastings, right where they left, I did not. So, luckily, I know where I'm going, otherwise, might be a problem. I didn't get lost. Easily. With all these tourists, these shops must be thriving. With all these tourists. Alright. Hastings appears. So that's the same as last time, so I'm gonna try and stop doing that as much as possible. I fear that this case is far from being solved. Come on, Poirot. You'll find the killer. Certes. But how many times will he kill before I do? So, let's see what we've got. We've got no new clues. We do have... We gotta go to the ginger cat. Woohoo. Um, nearly there. And that's our victim. Um, that is not a witness for this one. Okay, that's good to know. Um. Ah. Could it be the same buildings as on the victim's photo? This is definitely where the photo I found in the hut was taken. So let's let's look at this little thumbnail. Um, nothing on it. Okay. But that's our victim and someone apparently. So good to know. I'll be with you in a minute, gentlemen. This is a well-laid table. Nothing is out of place and, above all, no creases. What a pity. I don't have any chance to make it work. Something tells me that she's the owner of the ginger cat. This woman must be the owner of the ginger cat. It looks like something is bothering her. How can I help you? A hot chocolate and a tea for my friend, please. I'll bring it straight away. I need to know the time range during which Betty was working on her own. Where is Betty? Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? Interesting. Betty was alone between 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Who did she serve? No, this person is not the last one to have worked with Betty. Interesting. Betty was alone between 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Who did she serve? Sorry about that. Further out, we're going to go through the tickets. These are the different waiting staff's bills. Which ones were written by Betty? Alright, so... Uh, 
most probably a single man, a whiskey lover, maybe the murderer. This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. Most probably a family. Betty served a family and a man on his own. A whiskey drinker. Maybe the murderer. This information will help me to progress. What? Gentlemen, what are you doing? We are searching for clues, mademoiselle. My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a detective and this is Captain Hastings. Does Betty Barnard work here? That is correct. She should have been here a while ago. Punctuality is the first rule of politeness. I fear that Miss Barnard will not be coming today. She has just been found dead on the beach a few hundred meters from the cafe. How awful. Poor young thing. What happened? She appears to have been murdered. This is most distressing. How this will affect my business, I shudder to think. Hmm. Hmm. Do you want to say it's a advertisement for the town or ask what she knows about Betty? Let's, let's just ask what she knows about What Betty. can you tell us about Miss Barnard? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Miss Barnard was my employee. Her private life was none of my business. You did know at least that she had a young man. Indeed. Do you think he could have harmed her? I repeat, I wasn't on close terms with Betty. And even less so with her fiancé. How do you expect me to answer such a question? Now, please excuse me. I have work to do. The customer who ordered the whiskey might provide us more information. He may have been the last one to see Betty alive. It is an interesting idea, Stings. Maybe he is a regular guest. What do you think, mademoiselle? I don't think so. Our regular guests tend to order tea and cakes. At this time of the year, there are a lot of tourists about you never see again. That's what I thought. Time to visit Betty's home. All right. So now we get to go see Betty's home. Miss Marion is not the sort of witness that my friend enjoys questioning. How do you do, mademoiselle? My name is Hercule Poirot. I know you. You're that detective we hear all about. I do not know if that is a compliment, but I will take it as one for now. You are Betty's sister, I believe? Yes. My name is Megan. Can we come in? Please do. My parents are at the police station. I doubt they'll be up to speaking to you later. Do not worry. We will not bother them. Did you know your sister's plans for yesterday evening? No. I arrived by train this morning. My parents called me in a panic when they discovered that Betty had disappeared. She went out last night, but she didn't tell them where she was going. 
What was your last conversation about? Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother brought her a pair. The very day it happened, she was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Poor Mummy. The Barnard appeared to make music a priority in their budget. They're all Miss Modest, but the Barnards are definitely music lovers. This gramophone is magnificent. It is a one-off, without a doubt. What is she feeling at the moment? Mr. Poirot, I don't like being stared at. If you have something to say, would you please say it to me? Betty's older sister is not just sad, she is angry. Get in that mustache, Swirl. Um, oh, sorry for being so uh, non-talkative during this. Um, I mean, there's there's not a lot that I could say about this that's not. Um, yeah. Uh, Did Betty go out often? My sister wasn't a child, sir. She used to go out. She enjoyed films, dancing. She was a very good girl who didn't hang around with men. That's what they always say, no? I am not interested in what people say. I am interested in the truth, Mademoiselle Barnard. If you only knew how much I would like to talk with someone who does not know that your sister is dead and could provide me with a true portrait of her beyond the formalities. The truth is that my sister was a silly little fool I tried to reason with her, but she behaved like an idiot. In what way? She used to say that if she was going to marry Don, she might as well have some fun now. I understand. Please continue. Oh, excuse me, I have to answer that. But of course. Betty's room is opposite the stairs on the first floor. Feel free to take a look if you think it might be useful. This young woman is far too clever not to have anything else for us. Do you think she's hiding something? That is what I'm trying to find out. Surely you don't think she did it? I did not say anything of the sort. But young women always ruin your judgment, Hastings. Who knows, maybe Megan was jealous of her attractive young sister. I see. She may have had her sights on the inheritance. Or maybe she was in love with Donald Fraser. We have to study all scenarios, even the most unlikely. But I doubt that Mr. and Mrs. Barnard are rich enough to justify murder. While I try and get Miss Barnard to talk, I would like you to try and find Donald Fraser. It should be easy to find the estate agents where he works. Bring him to the Ginger Cats. I would like to talk with him before the chief inspector finds him. All right, I'm going to cut this one off here um, before we go searching in Betty's room. Because that will uh, most likely take a minute. So I'll stop this here. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't.
constructive criticism, please. Hence, tips, things that you feel would make this experience better. Um, thanks. This has been Meandering with Juliana and the ABC and Agatha Christie's ABC Murders. Um, I will see you next time. And bye.